uh, if you could tell me the kind of origin story of Necropanther from the year 2014. So I'm originally from Wichita, Kansas, which is about an eight hour drive from here. Um, I moved out here in 2014 with the hopes and aspirations to start um, an amazing metal band. And um, I came out here and I had a few songs demoed out. And um, I actually reached out on Craigslist. I put an ad out with a link to my songs and I just said, hey, looking for some guys to play. And our lead guitarist, Joe Johnson, responded to my ad. And um, we jammed a couple times and we liked each other and we liked uh, the style of music that we were going for. So we kept playing and in search of a drummer, Joe knew Hoken, luckily. So Joe kind of recruited Hoken. And then, um, yeah, we've been jamming since then. Yeah, as the EPs uh, have shown us that there's a lot of variety in the band. How have you kind of, uh, in the years, kind of uh, honed your own sound? Well, I think I think we're still really trying to hone in on our singular Necropanther sound because it is such a wide variety of influences, a wide variety of um, things that we like to play. So, I mean, it's been a long time coming, but I think now we're finally kind of in our groove where we're all contributing to all the songs um, in terms of music. We all have a say in parts, um, we all have a say in um how the song develops so i think i think our particular sound really lends to the fact that we um we all collaborate together it it depends on the style of music too i think because since we all write music um there can be such different influences that come in at the same time and um when when we write our albums we all collaborate we all have input on how things go but with our EPs, we kind of give free reign to one person and let them do kind of whatever they want. Um, so the, the, the Necropanther sound is, is honing in, but it's also always evolving. Yeah, where did the idea come from to have uh, do these EPs? Uh, is written by a single band member. Uh, I feel like most musicians would uh, start a new project. <laughs> uh, so we, uh, when, uh, when Marcus joined the band, we were two weeks away from recording uh, Eyes of Blue Light. And he learned an entire album, uh, put in his own bass lines in two weeks, which was crazy. And, uh, and finished recording Eyes of Blue Light, but since he joined the band so close to recording it, he had his own songs, uh, three songs that he really liked. So in order to still include those uh, with the Necropanther, we decided to give him um, the chance to release an EP under the name Necropanther, where we would all work together to get his music out the way he saw it as. And from there, it kind of just involved to, well, whose turn is it now? Talk about the latest one then, uh, In Depths We Sleep. Uh, corona, of course, uh, had a huge impact on recording this EP. So how was it kind of managed in the end? So we, <clears throat> we were in the midst of lockdown and social distancing. Um, so it was kind of difficult, but we managed through um, just coming over one by one and recording just the drums. So Hogan came over to my place and we recorded the drums, uh, socially distanced with masks on. And then um, Marcus, the bassist came over and we recorded the bass, socially distanced with masks on. 
I recorded my guitars alone, and then Joe um, reamped the guitar uh, performances at his house, and then emailed them back to me. I emailed Hogan the drums so he could edit them, and then he emailed them back to me. So it was a lot of emailing back and forth of files. Um, and it was a little bit of a challenge, a little bit difficult, but in the end it was successful and it was a, it was a different, a different way for us to, to do the album. The Corona workflow and all the craziness seems to be like worlds away from where you were writing these songs, working as a diving teacher. So do you see, uh, in your view, did that somehow translate onto the EP? Um, I think it did because when I was writing those songs, I was basically by myself in my room at home at night. Um, I didn't have any much outside influence besides what I was doing in my work, which was being underwater all day and being on a boat all day. Um, so just being at home by myself and kind of in that solitude, it kind of it kind of was a similar mindset, I think, to where I was when I was writing these about 10 to 12 years ago. Because, you know, we weren't really going out. I, we weren't going to bars. We're all closed. We weren't playing shows. There were no shows being played. So it was, it was a very similar, similar experience to being on an island with nothing else going on. So similar, yes. Uh, what about your EP, uh, Håkan et Unutik Liv? Uh, when was uh, that music uh, uh, written? Uh, <clears throat> it was it was my turn to write something, and and since since we kind of have free reign to a certain point, uh, I decided to make I, I decided to make a. I guess a political stance uh, about how about how much we despise Nazis and racists um, because it was becoming such a prevalent uh, issue in the metal scene in Denver, um, and and I, I've seen a lot of black metal um, not care very much about whether or not their artists are Nazis or racists. So I decided to want to write a song in the style that they find the most, I guess, comfort in uh, with lyrics that are uh, as much against them as I can. Um, so this, there was our, uh, it was Necropanther's first uh, first release of a Norwegian actual Norwegian black metal song, and it was a lot of fun um, being right next to Paul the entire time he recorded the vocals for it, so I can guide him to how to pronounce every word. That was a very fun experience for me. Uh, do you think in future will the how you have worked on these EPs will it affect the music of uh, the albums? Uh, yeah, maybe in my mind, we haven't really talked about it, but in my mind, I'm hoping that we'll have at least maybe one more Norwegian metal song. I don't know if it'll be a black metal, but it was, uh, I think it's so unique for, um, an American band to write a song in Norwegian, um, and perform it in Norwegian. Uh, so maybe, maybe there'll be something like that in the future, uh, if, if it all seems to fit in place and then the entire band agrees. Um, uh, but it was, it was my, my furthest attempt to write as black metal as I could. So I think in the future too, I'll be, I'll venture more into that black metal realm and, Try to create some more Norwegian black metal, hopefully. Yeah, I think I think it keeps us 
flexible as songwriters, you know, like we're not just saying this is our genre. This is how it has to sound. We can't do this. We can't do that because that's not what we're like. So with the EPs being so explorative with genre and style, I think that helps our full lengths also be more explorative as well. Yeah, definitely. Now that we've now that we've re- gone into the realm of releasing uh, a Doom EP and a Norwegian black metal single, um, I feel like our range is now wider for whenever we go back to recording the album. What's gonna be next? Uh, is it another EP or is it an album next? What's an album next? Uh, yeah. We've all been working on writing songs and we have a ton of demos and ideas. And now that we're all vaccinated and um, we've been practicing quite a bit, working up a set so we can hopefully play live again in the next few months. And um, the next is we've just been writing a lot and we've got we've got probably 20 or 30 ideas to kick around. and. Um, you know, we're just going to pick the best of the best. And we've been collaborating a lot, too. So that's cool. Uh, um, so, yeah, it'll definitely be a full length and it'll be a lot of collaboration. And it should be really awesome because we have tons and tons of material to pull from.